When you picture Stone Age Europeans, what do you see? Light skin? Blue eyes? But what if the real picture was completely different? For many years, the textbook view has been that when the first modern humans arrived in Europe around 45,000 years ago, they rapidly evolved lighter skin as an adaptation to the region's weaker sunlight compared to Africa. The reasoning appeared simple and straightforward. Paler skin allows more ultraviolet radiation to penetrate the body, boosting the production of vitamin D, an essential nutrient for human health. However, analysis of ancient DNA now challenges this long-standing assumption. By examining the genomes of 348 individuals who lived between 45,000 and 1,700 years ago, researchers uncovered a striking reality. For most of Europe's past, the majority of its population had dark skin. It was only around 3,000 years ago that lighter skin tones became widespread and dominant. Skin color is one of the most noticeable human traits, yet its evolutionary history has long been uncertain. Early humans in Africa almost certainly had dark skin, which offered protection against the intense ultraviolet UV radiation near the equator. As human populations migrated north into Europe and Asia through the Levant, where UV levels were lower, lighter skin gradually became advantageous because it allowed the body to produce vitamin D more efficiently. But the new study reveals that this transition was anything but straightforward. Even during the Copper and Iron Ages, roughly 5,000 to 3,000 years ago, about half of the individuals analyzed still displayed dark or intermediate skin tones. Earlier research on ancient populations has revealed strikingly similar results. A 2023 study found that Utsi, the famous glacier mummy who lived 5,300 years ago and died violently in the Alps, was dark-skinned. Genetic analysis showed his skin tone was darker than that of most modern Southern Europeans, though lighter than that of present-day Sub-Saharan Africans. Anthropologist Albert Zink, the study's co-author and head of the Uruk Research Institute for Mummy Studies, said, It's the darkest skin tone that's been recorded in contemporary European individuals. In 2018, scientists sequencing DNA from Britain's oldest complete skeleton, the 10,000-year-old male known as Cheddar Man, were astonished to discover that he had dark brown skin and blue eyes. This finding, along with the discovery of a 12,000-year-old Swedish hunter-gatherer with dark skin and blue eyes, strongly suggests that many early Europeans were far darker skinned than previously assumed. Across much of the tens of thousands of years represented in the new study, led by Guido Barbagiani at the University of Ferrara in Italy, about 63% of ancient Europeans were found to have dark skin, while only 8% had pale skin. The rest fell somewhere in between. These conclusions come from DNA extracted from bones and teeth, combined with advanced forensic methods that can predict skin, eye, and hair color from genetic markers. To account for the fragmented and degraded nature of ancient DNA, the researchers applied a sophisticated probabilistic approach to estimate pigmentation traits. They validated their method using two high-coverage ancient genomes, Oost Ishim, a 45,000-year-old man from Siberia, and SF12, a 9,000-year-old individual from Sweden. By deliberately reducing the data to simulate lower quality genetic coverage, they showed that the method could still reliably predict pigmentation traits, even from very limited DNA. The earliest clear signs of lighter pigmentation emerged during the Mesolithic period, roughly 14,000 to 4,000 years ago, when a small number of individuals in Sweden and France were found to have light skin and blue eyes. By the Bronze Age, about 7,000 to 3,000 years ago, the proportion of dark-skinned individuals had declined to around half of the population. It was not until the Iron Age, between 3,000 and 1,700 years ago, that lighter skin tones became the dominant trait, with multiple individuals from England, Hungary, Estonia, and the Czech Republic displaying a combination of light skin, blue eyes, and blonde hair. The most significant shift, however, began with the spread of the Neolithic farmers from Anatolia around 10,000 years ago. These early agricultural communities carry genetic variants associated with lighter skin, which likely provided an advantage in Europe's lower UV environments. Over generations, their genes gradually dispersed across the continent, though the transition was uneven, allowing darker skin to persist for thousands of years in some regions longer than in others. The study also revealed fascinating trends in eye and hair color. Light-colored eyes reached their highest frequency during the Mesolithic, thousands of years before lighter skin became widespread. 
which points to the possibility that eye colour changed independently of skin pigmentation. While dark hair remained the dominant trait throughout most of prehistory, the earliest appearances of blonde and red hair emerged during the Neolithic and Bronze Ages. The question remains, why did lighter skin become more common in Europe? The traditional explanation that pale skin evolved to maximise vitamin D production in low light environments may not tell the whole story. Instead, dietary changes may have played a key role. As humans transitioned from small nomadic hunter-gatherers to larger agricultural communities, their diet shifted. They relied less on vitamin D rich meat, fish, eggs and animal fat from wild game and more on cultivated crops which lacked the vitamin. This change, combined with the need to absorb more sunlight in northern latitudes, may have driven the evolution of lighter skin. Furthermore, the researchers stressed that other factors, including sexual selection and genetic drift, likely contributed to the emergence of traits like blonde hair and blue eyes. The Neolithic expansion and the large waves of migration spreading west from Anatolia likely played a major role in Europe's gradual shift towards lighter skin through population mixing and gene flow. But what about the Neanderthals, who inhabited Europe for tens of thousands of years before modern humans arrived? Interestingly, the study confirms that pale skin in modern Europeans was not inherited from Neanderthals. Although previous research shows that the two groups interbred, the genetic evidence indicates that lighter skin evolved independently in modern human populations. The study also sheds light on specific genes that played a key role in the evolution of pigmentation. For example, the researchers identified two variants in the genes TYR and SLC24A5 that are strongly associated with lighter skin. These variations were absent in the Paleolithic Uzdashim man, but present in the Bronze Age individual from Hungary, who had light skin, blue eyes and blonde hair. While DNA offers the most direct evidence of ancient skin colour, researchers have also turned to art for clues. For instance, Artworks from ancient Egypt often portray women with lighter skin than men. However, interpreting such images too literally can be misleading, as artistic conventions do not always reflect biological reality. For years it was believed that Europeans quickly evolved lighter skin to adapt to northern climates, but this study shows that ancient Europeans from same eras actually displayed a wide range of skin tones. There are several reasonable arguments and caveats one could raise in critique of the claims summarised in this new study about ancient Europeans mostly having dark skin. Here are some of the main potential objections or limitations to take into account. Pigmentation is polygenic and complex. Skin colour is determined by many genes, not just a few. While the recent study infers dark, intermediate and light skin from ancient DNA, that is using an approximation using a probabilistic method over limited genetic markers. That means there is substantial uncertainty, especially for individuals with degraded or low coverage DNA. So, even if many ancient individuals are inferred as dark skinned, that doesn't mean their appearance was exactly like modern populations with dark skin, or that there weren't degrees of variation. Sampling bias and geographic coverage. The conclusions come from analysing 348 ancient genomes from multiple locations across Eurasia over tens of thousands of years, but even this is only a small fraction of all ancient populations. Some regions of Europe or Eurasia may be underrepresented, and preservation of DNA over millennia favours certain environments and contexts. That uneven sampling might skew the data toward particular demographic groups. Thus, most ancient Europeans is a generalised statement, but may obscure important regional, temporal or genetic diversity. Inference versus direct evidence Because skin, hair and eye pigmentation don't fossilise, scientists have to infer appearance from genes, rather than directly observe it. That inference is helpful, but also necessarily tentative. As one critic quoted in media has noted, impossible to know how accurate the pigment estimates are when based solely on ancient DNA. But because of the limitations above, genetic inference, sampling bias, polygenic complexity and preprint status 
the picture remains tentative. We should view claims like most ancient Europeans had dark skin until 3000 years ago as a working hypothesis, a well-informed one, but not a definitive conclusion. In the end, the story of human skin colour is not just about biology, it's about the journeys our ancestors took, the environments they adapted to, and the genetic legacy they left behind. And thanks to ancient DNA, we can now begin to unravel that story one genome at a time.